Okay, good afternoon. Um, welcome to the Jonas Club Management J Mail and Member Statements webinar. My name is Sarah and I'll be hosting this webinar today. Uh, just a couple of things to go through before we get started. Uh, first one is phones are muted currently, so your phone lines are muted. If you do have any questions, please go ahead and use the chat box or the question and answer box to ask them. Um, you can access the chat box if you hover your mouse at the top of the screen, you should see a little green bar. Hover over that bar and it should drop down a toolbar and then from there you can click on chat or Q&A. Q&A allows the option for me to answer your questions privately, so if you would prefer that, definitely use the Q&A. I will try to answer all questions as they come up if I do see them come through the chat, if I believe that they are relevant to the slide that we are discussing and the answer is not housed in a future slide. Otherwise, all, answers will be que all questions will be answered at the end of the session. Um, and also a copy of this presentation it will be available in PDF form, so you can get these slides, PDF form on the jonassupport.com website, and also a video of this presentation will be available to you in the video library, and that's again under jonassupport.com, the resources and training tab. So we are recording this session. If you would prefer that your question does not get answered over the recording, please let me know via the chat and I can answer it in the chat box. Or if you feel shy about having your question or about having your voice in the recording, go ahead and put your question in the chat box because I will not say your name when I'm answering those questions. Um, so what do you expect from this webinar? Webinars are just there to enhance your knowledge of Jonas, so we do expect that you have a base knowledge. Um, they're not to be taken as replacement for training. It's about 50 minutes of information with 10 minutes for question and answer. I do find that this one runs a little bit shorter, so we will have time for question and answer at the end. Uh, the way that will go is I will look at the chat box first, answer any questions there, and then I will go ahead and unmute the phone lines and you guys can go ahead and ask me any questions that you might have. So let's get started. This is what we'll be covering today. First of all, where can you use the Jmail module? So the Jmail module basically is the ability to send emails from within your Jonas software. So we'll go over where it can be used, how to set it up, and what setup your, might work for your club, whether you're using Outlook or an SMTP server. We'll go through Letter Designer, and this is more pertains to member statements, but Letter Designer can also be sent as mass emails to your members. And then we'll go over member statements and how to set those up to be emailed. So the first thing we'll look at is just the Jmail module in general. So it can be widely used in Jonas. You can pretty much Jmail anything. Um, you can use it when you're printing reports. And you can also use it for specific processes, such as the ones listed here, emailing member statements, emailing confirmation, so for your hotel or your dining reservations, emailing POS chits, so at the end of an order, instead of printing out a physical copy of the receipt, you can actually give the member the option to have their chit emailed to them. Um, you can also email your tea time confirmations and also any cancellations or changes made to those reservations, as well as your payroll earning statements. So you can see Gmail can be used in pretty much any module offered by Jonas. To use the Jmail module, you really just need to push that Jmail button that comes up when you go ahead and print any report, confirmation, or go ahead and update anything. So to set up Jmail to be used, first step would be to go to System Administration, System Setup, and then Jmail Parameters. What you'll need to do is select your company, and the first one to set up would be your default parameters. You'll enter your profile name. You'll select your form type, which is you know what kind of thing are we using this specific setup for. So your first one definitely is your default parameters, but then each module or each instance where you can Jmail something can actually be overridden form by form. And then you'll have to select the mail client. So what that means is whether you're using Outlook, so if your club uses Outlook, Outlook will definitely be your mail client or whether you'd like to use an SMTP server, so your email server. Using this option definitely will require assistance from your club's IT professional because we do need some information and we do need to log in to that email server to be able to access it. So the Gmail settings first should be configured globally and that's again by doing your default first. So I'll show you what this screen looks like so we can place it all together, but basically what we need to set up first is the form type 00 which is company default parameters. And then those settings can actually be overridden form by form by selecting the specific ones you'd like to configure. Um, so the form is a standard list. Of course, you're going to have some stuff on there that maybe you're not using. Um, but basically some examples of a form would be 
club statement, tea time confirmation, POS chit, hotel confirmation, um, and there's also an AP direct deposit list as well. So this is what the Jmail configuration screen looks like. And again, you can find this in system administration, system setup, and then Jmail parameters. So you can see first you have to choose your company and then your form type. And I'll show you the full list of form types on the next screen. Once you've chosen your form type, you do have to choose your mail client. So you do have the option of using either Outlook or an SMTP server, which is your email, your club's email server. Um, once you have that stuff set up, you do just have to enter in a profile name, a default subject, and you also have the option to attach files or blind copy different people when you're sending emails. So this is all the different forms that you can have from the Jonas Gmail module. Um, picking out some of the more popular ones are definitely club statement, uh, banquet and catering invoices, hotel folios, AP direct deposits, club payments, and your tea sheets or your tea time confirmation. These are all the different things that you can actually override your defaults and have specific setups for. So maybe some come from one email address, some will come through your Outlook, some will come through your email server, et cetera. So just to reiterate, different profiles can be set up for different form types. So you can override the mail client, which is Outlook versus SMTP, the subject line, as well as adding attachments. So for your statements, you might want to add a newsletter. For your tea times, maybe you want to add a reminder about the, the event schedule you have coming up for your pro shop. Um, for your banquets, maybe you want to add a copy of your standard banquet policies. You can also CC people or blind CC recipients. So maybe every time a confirmation is sent out, it also goes to your banquet manager, for example, or your golf pro. So if we're looking here, this is an example of how you would configure for statements. You would choose your company. Your form type is C1 club statements. I've chosen to use Outlook. My default subject is just statement, and then I've decided to attach a newsletter to this email. So let's talk a little bit about mail clients. So I'm going to talk uh, Outlook versus SMTP. So how should you be sending emails in Jonas? Um, typically, it's dependent on how your club actually has their email set up. If you're using Outlook, you will use Outlook as your mail client. If you're using something else such as G. Gmail, Google Mail, or um, Outlook 365, Office 365, then you'll probably want to use SMTP. So talking a little bit about Outlook first, we recommend you use the Outlook Calm, which uses the program that's actually already installed on your computer, which is Outlook. It does not work with Office 365, and it's just sent from whichever computer is logged into the Outlook that you're sending the Gmail from. So for example, if I was to send a Gmail for my Jonas right now, it would come from my personal email. You can have multiple profiles set up in Outlook. So you could have maybe one that's your personal, one that's just, per, say, for example, proshop at jonasclub.com. And then that, that you have the option um, when you're using the Outlook mail client to choose which profile to send from. So Outlook has to be open and you have to be logged into it for this to work. SMTP is an email server which always kind of runs in the background. So no application needs to be running on the computer that you're on. It sends it out, sends out the email right away. And it's ideal when you're working with really big statement runs or you have a lot of confirmations coming through um, or you're working on computers where Outlook is not installed. So if you're not using Outlook, this would be your option. There are two ways to set up SMTP in Jonas. You have the SMTP PVX email which uh, requires no DLL, so what that means is there's no file to be registered. You do not have to be the administrator to use this. Um, but then you also have SMTP with SSL slash TLS encryption, which is a little bit more secure, and it does require information from your IT because you have to have a login, so you have to have a username and password to be able to use this email server. So the SMTP, if you are choosing to use this, it does require additional information, and typically we need it from your IT professional. What we need from, from the club or from IT is your server name. So it's typically something like mail.jonassoftware.com. We need a from name and a from address. So this would be the person that it's coming from as well as their email address. So it would be me, Sarah Salvatore, 
and the from address would be my email address. And then you'd have to go up to the authentication tab and put in the port number. Um, the default is 25, but it depends on what email server you're using. And as well, if there is a password required to get in, and if there is, you need your login name and your password. If you're using the SSL slash TLS mail client, you need to select the level of encryption. So that looks like this here. So for example, if I was setting it up for my club statements, I've clicked on authentication. I've checked off that password authentication is required. So now if we're looking at it, my outgoing mail port is 587. And I've put in my login name and my login password. In this case, we are not using the SSL slash TLS option. So the encryption required is grayed out. We don't have to put anything there. So once you have your parameters set up, whether you're using Outlook or SMTP, you can actually send a test email right from those parameters. So for Outlook, um, what you'll need to do is just click on test email and it's up in the top. Uh, enter an email address to send the test to. Jonas will let you know if it was sent successfully or not. And you'll actually see it in your Outlook in your sent folder. And that's what this looks like here. So we, uh, what you'll do is you'll select test email, which is up at the top right, put in an email address and hit OK. And then you'll see I have my test result message here saying, this was good, you can find the sent message. What it looks like in email, or in Outlook, sorry, is uh, this is my sent folder, was sent to me from me, and this is my attachment there that I, at I attached, so that came through perfectly, and it's telling me that my test email went through correct. For the SMTP, same thing, you will select test email in the top right of the Gmail parameter screen. Um, Jonas will prompt if it was able to connect, communicate with the email server or not. So this would be an example of a positive email. It was sent, it was ready to communicate, and it went through. What you'll also get is an error number if it was not able to. And those error numbers, you can actually, each one has a different meaning. So it'll give you the error number, and that kind of gives us a clue as to what the problem was, whether it was the password and username were not correct, or um, the email server is offline, or it just could not find it. Um, so you want to always verify that email was delivered because there is no sent folder for you to look in. So if you're testing, you want to make sure that, that the email that you put in is one that you have access to, and it did actually send the email. So we've put in our parameters. We've chosen which mail client we're going to use, SMTP versus Outlook. We've tested and confirmed that our test email works. So now we can go ahead and start using Jmail. Using Gmail, uh, we'll start with Outlook. So say you've chosen to use Outlook as your mail client. When you're producing reports, instead of selecting Print, View, PDF, Smart Viewer, you'll select Jmail. Jonas will generate an email in Outlook with a subject line, the report attached. All you have to do at this point is enter in the recipient. So if your controller, for example, is requesting reports from you, instead of you printing them out, saving them as a PDF, attaching them to an email, you can actually just hit run in Jonas, and then hit Jmail and send them right from there. So again, this is what the where would you like it printed screen looks like in the version 12.7, and the Jmail button is just off to the left, kind of near the bottom. Click on that, and then you'll see this is an example of the email that gets sent, has my report, has a subject line, and then I just have to put in who it's going to. When you're producing reports for using the SMTP option, you will still select Jmail as the print option. Jonas will generate a sending mail box, so you'll see a box come up with different, it almost looks like the Jmail parameters screen, and it allows you to put in the recipient and the subject line, and then you can go ahead and send the email. So that's what this box looks like here. You have the option to put in the name of the person you're sending to, as well as the email address. It fills in all the SMTP info for you there, you can also attach things from here as well as put in a CC address or a BCC address. Once you're happy with this, go ahead and hit send in the top right, and it should send the email. If it does not communicate with the email server, if something goes wrong, it will bring you back a message that gives you the error number as to why it couldn't communicate with your email server. If you are using Gmail for member statements, this is where we'll start to kind of get into the statement setup. So the first thing that you need when you're sending statements to members via Gmail, after you've actually set up your Gmail and confirmed it's working, is a letter. So 
this letter designer, and you can find this under administration, letter designer, allows you to create an email body. So the email body can be included with your member statements. The statements come through as a PDF attachment. So when you generate this email body, it's kind of just a personalized message to your members. Could be something as simple as, dear member attached as your statement. Could be something as detailed as, you know, dear Mr. John Smith, here is your statement for March 2017. Your balance owing is $1,200. Please remit payment to and give your address. And then give a full signature as well. If you have any questions, please contact the club. So going into the letter designer to set up your, your body of the email, what you'll do is you'll go to administration, letter designer, select your type of form. So there are different types of forms that you can set up. In this case for statements, so we are just talking about statements today, you will select club freeform letter. And then you'll enter in a code. So just like everything in Jonas, pretty much everything that you set up is, gener is stored underneath a code. So the code can be as simple as statement email um, or just email. And then you'll enter in a description, and this is just a longer description so you know what it is. And this could be body of statement email. Um, you can change the font size and the type. And you can also drag in member merge fields. So what that means is for each member, they'll get a personalized email. So you can drag in things like member name, you can drag in their contact information, you can drag in their balances, their minimum info, any custom fields you've set up, you can pretty much drag in anything. Um, and one thing to note about these letters is that they are HTML friendly. So if you yourself are handy with HTML or you have somebody on staff who knows the HTML language, what you can do is actually use the HTML option. And uh, the benefits of using HTML are you can add logos, you can add photos, um, hyperlinks, you can have different fonts for different sections of the email. So yes, you can definitely add a logo or a picture to the body of the email, uh, but it does have to be in HTML format. And there are plenty of tutorials that can show you online how to generate that code. Um, the only thing is that the picture or the logo needs to be hosted online, so you need to have a hyperlink to it. Um, but you can have it show up right in the email. So this is an example of an email body, a letter designer body that's very very standard. It's not HTML, it's just free text. Um, you can see that I've chosen dear, and then I have pulled in some merge fields. So for example, for myself, this would be dear Miss Sarah Salvatore. Please find attached your statement for March 2017. Then I have some information about payments and then where to contact me if I need any further assistance. There are a bunch of different fields that you can pull into this, including their balance owing as well as their minimum information. So have a look through that when you go and create your letter designer because there are some, some really cool ways you can personalize this for your members. So this is what a plain text one would look like. If you were to convert it to HTML and use HTML, it would look a lot different. It's very confusing. You can see all the different uh, font directors and bold font size directors, any kind of formatting, all of that is in there. Um, it looks overwhelming, but it's definitely easy to do once you get the hang of it. So to set up your club for email statements, once you have that letter designer, the body of the email set up, you can head into club management, club admin, and then select club form design. There's a little tab there called PDF statements. You'll wanna click on that. And then you'll just have to turn on the flag, so it's just a checkbox set to email as PDF attachment, that's what it's called. You'll put in your letter designer code, so you're telling Jonas this is the body of my email. And then for clubs who use like a pre-printed statement letterhead, um, what you can do is, is you can scan that in and actually just link that into Jonas so that the email statement looks exactly like the printed statement. So this is for clubs that have pre-printed paper that have their logo and lines on it. They just print the information from Jonas. If you're finding that you're scanning it in and it's not aligning properly, what you can do is actually send in, so we, were, we ask that you send maybe five to six copies of that piece of paper, mail it into uh, Jonas, and for anyone who needs that address, stay on the line afterwards during the question and answer, I can, I can give it out. And we can actually configure that statement Im image file, so we can help, help you out with that. Um, testing can also be done at the bottom just by selecting a member. So just to show you what that screen looks like, we're under club management, club admin, select club form designs. I've selected my club and I've navigated to the PDF statements tab. 
check off the box there that says email as PDF attachment. And then I am using a letter designer code, so I do have a body of the email. And you can see that code is statement two, and that's linked in the next line. And the line below that is the statement image file, so the background of my statement. What does that look like? I've linked that in as well. That has to be a JPEG. You can test and see what the statement looks like down at the bottom where it's circled in red just by choosing a member number, choosing an as of date, and clicking on test PDF. That will give you an idea of what the PDF statement is going to look like to your members when you send it out. So you set up your statements, you've configured your Gmail, you've confirmed that the test works, you've set up an email body, and you've told Jonas that your statements can be sent as a PDF attachment. The last step is to set up members to be eligible for email statements. So in order for members to be eligible for email statements, they need to have the statement option set on their profile to be either emailed or both. So you, get, you have three options there. There's printed, emailed, or both. What you'll need is either emailed or both for them to be included in the email run. So you can find that under Club Management, Set Up Edit Members, Member File. Um, down in the bottom left-hand side, there is a little spot called Statement Option. That's where you'll select whether they get an email statement or a printed statement. You can also send the statement to multiple email addresses. So just like you can keep multiple addresses on file for your members, you can choose which addresses get the statement. So if maybe the main member wants their spouse to also get a copy of the statement, you would add the spouse's email as an additional email address to the member profile. So this is just an example of a member profile. You can see I have an email there as well as my statement option is set to emailed. So that is where you would set that up. If I wanted to email to more email addresses, I would flip to the next screen and you can see I've added a secondary email here that's also checked off to receive a statement. So once you have your members set to receive email statements, you've set up your Gmail, you've confirmed it's working, you've configured your statements to be eligible for PDF, you can go ahead and process your statements. So you'll go to Club Management, Inquiry Statements Archives, and then Print Statements. Configure your statement run as you always do. So same as what you're doing with your printed, put in the same as of date, the same parameters that you would normally run. After you select OK, instead of hitting print, what you'll do is hit Jmail instead. So if you have some members who want a printed statement and some that want an email statement, what you'll have to do is do this process twice. So two times you'll go into Club Management, Inquiry Statements Archives, and then Print Statements. The first time select print, the second time select Jmail. And the reason I recommend you go in that order is because the Jmail does kind of take over your computer depending on how many statements you need to email. That way at least you have the printed copies coming and you can stuff your envelopes while it's emailing. So you will get a preview screen when you select Jmail and uh, depending on whether you're using Outlook or SMTP, the preview screen is a little bit different. But on that preview screen, it will give you the first member in the statement run will give you the email body and it gives you the option to actually preview what the statement looks like. If you're happy with that, you can hit send all and it'll just run through the rest of your members. If you want to go through one by one, you definitely can and there is an option to just hit send for each person. Um, I don't recommend this, it's going to take you a long time, but it's there if you want it. So again, this is what it looks like. You're at your print statement screen, you've selected OK and now we're going to go ahead and hit Jmail. Once I hit Jmail, this is what I will get as kind of a preview screen. This is the first person in my statement run. I have the option to hit send, send all, skip, or I can actually cancel all from here. If I hit send and I'm using Outlook, it will pop up the first email. I just have to hit send on that email and then the rest will go. If I hit cancel all, of course it's going to cancel. And if I hit skip, this screen will pop up again with the next member in line. If I hit send to all, I will only see this screen once. So once I hit send all, I will not see it anymore. Jonas will just run through and email everyone's statements out. Um, this is an example of the email that I'll see. I just have to hit send here after I check out the statement and make sure it looks how I want it to look. And that is all the material I have for you today in this presentation. Um, I will open it up for questions now. I did have one come through the Q&A and I tried to answer it when it came through, but I just want to double confirm that yes, you can add a logo slash picture to the body of the email as long as you are using HTML format. And the image is hosted online somewhere, so Jonas needs to be able to get it from somewhere. 
Um, HTML format, I, I'm sorry, I don't know the code on, off the top of my head, um, but there are definitely tools online that can help you with that coding to get that image in there. Or uh, you might have someone at the club, such as your IT person or your communications person who knows HTML and can, and can code that for you. If you still need help and you're not able to get that image in there, definitely call support because we can help you as well. So I am going to go ahead and unmute the phones now. Give it just a second. I will let you know when it uh, kicks in and we can uh, go for more questions. Line unmuted. Unmuted now if anybody has any questions for me at this time. Uh, yes, I have one question. Um, you were indicating that we can add additional um, uh, email addresses in to, for the statements yep. uh, sent to people uh, mm -hmm. to add, like, whatever. But like, uh, for some reason, we've added some, and people would not be receiving them. Oh, okay. Um, the only way it would work is if I'm adding it as a business. Really? Yeah. So you're adding it, I just want to confirm. If so you're I, adding it in the member profile. That's correct. Just right. On the bottom where you can add exactly under email. Come on, there we go. So you're typing in the address here. The address there and clicking statements. And it's not sending to the secondary address? No. People are not oh. receiving them. Um, but, and but the main person is receiving it, right? The main person is receiving it, but not the additional one. Oh, but that's weird. Go into their profile and enter it under business information, and then mm -hmm. go back and click. The, the email is going to appear in this screen the mm -hmm. for the business, and then I would click that, then that works. Oh. Um, that's definitely a weird one. Did this just start happening? Has it been always like this? I've always had a, a problem that people are not receiving it. Okay. Um, this one I'm going to ask if you – have you called support about this already? Have they looked into it? Uh, I believe I did way back, but um, – I might get you to do that again because that that's definitely not how it should be working. So it sounds like maybe something's broken there. Unless it was older versions because I haven't retried it in a long time ago. Like, yeah, I, I it could be an older version. Yeah, it could, it could be an older version issue. Definitely, um, yeah. I know I know for sure it works in version 12.7 because I, I actually just set it up for another club um, okay. and we were testing it. But definitely uh, try it again, and if it still doesn't work, definitely call support because we uh, will want to take a look at that for sure. Okay, all right. Yeah. Sorry and about that. I do have another question as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if other clubs are having problems, <laughs> but um, our 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 email provider is we use Rogers, and for some reason, for the last five months, uh, four or five months, I've been having issues whenever I'm sending statements. Before I used to do send all, and it would I would have no problem. It would send everybody uh, one after the other, and there was no issues. And uh, for the last little while, I have to send it by, sta by status, member status, because for some reason, it gives me a pop-up message saying that I'm exceeding um, the number of recipients. Because what happens is when it's sending the statement, it's all the same subject going mm -hmm. out on the... So it doesn't, like, I don't know if there would be a way that we can integrate into the subject the member number the client mm -hmm. number, because then this way they would all be different. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a really good idea, actually. It's not an option right now, but um, thank you for that. I'm going to submit that to put the member number in the subject line. It what sounds happened? like maybe it's being flagged as spam, like Rogers is just not allowing you to send that many at once. Uh, it's the provide like it's the providers. They're putting filters, mm -hmm. and the way it screens it, it says, well, they can only accept so many. Because they're considering it as if it's one message, even though in my email it shows that it's all different, Multiple, like it's all different yeah. emails going out. But they don't see it that way when it goes through the uh, the service providers. They see it at one email, the same email mm -hmm. going to multiple people. Because, because it, yeah, because it's all the same subject. Right, exactly, and it goes in 
like within seconds, there's multiple ones going through, so they see it all as if it's the same email going to multiple people. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm the, the only one that's having that issue at the moment, but uh, I, I, we've talked to our providers and everything, and we've talked to Jonas, and there's, at this moment, all I can do is send it by, by set member status, but it's, uh, it's difficult because even doing it by member status, I have multiple members into one status, I still get bounced back. Oh, if you have too many members in one status. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, and you talked to Rogers and they just told you that's how it is? It, it, they, they, may, it, they may have done some changes into their filtering. They say, well, uh, they have some filters and for, for mass mail-outs and things like that, and there's nothing we can do. <laughs> Shoot. Um. <laughs> but before, I had no problems at all. But they just recently started filtering? For the, months, for the last few months, I've started having those bounce back. I know the laws, I, I'm assuming you're Canadian if you're using Rogers, I know the laws changed here recently about email consent. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if they had to add those filters to keep up with the laws. So I know it was a 2017 thing, because um, be. we actually had to consent to sending emails as well. All right. I wonder, I don't, I'm really sorry, I don't have a, a good solution for you right now just because it sounds like it's Rogers that's filtering it. Um, mm -hmm. But, I, but I, if this is something that you're experiencing, I bet you there are other clubs that are going to either start experiencing it or are already experiencing it. So I will, I'm going to submit it. I know you've already talked to Jonas, but I'll submit it anyways as an action or as a wish list item. And that way we can try and see what we can do to kind of, yeah, put, a, put the member number in the subject line or kind of get around those email filters. Because uh, it sounds like it might be a problem that we want to get ahead of. Yeah, if we're able to put the member number in the subject line, then all, all the emails would be different. So the subject mm -hmm. no. different. Yeah, that's it, a great solution. alleviate that problem whenever there's filtering problems uh, or filtering, uh, they're tightening up their filters with a lot of providers and uh, for security purposes, and it may be an issue. Mm -hmm. What, um, if you don't mind me asking, it's okay if you're not comfortable saying out loud, but what club are you from, just so I know uh, who to submit this on behalf of? So Camelot Golf and Country Club. Camelot, perfect. In Ottawa. Okay, I'm gonna put that in for sure as, a, as an enhancement because um, it sounds like something that might come back to bite us if we don't get ahead of it now. Well, it, it, well, I, well, it already is for you guys, but. <laughs> like a lot of companies like uh, service providers and whatever, they're getting tighter, tighter with their, uh, the, mm -hmm. with their, their filtering systems so, or to prevent spam and things like that. So it may be even another issue with other providers in the future. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for that. Sorry about that again. Oh, you're welcome. Are there any other questions for me at this time? Okay, I did have one come through the Q&A. Can you skip sending attachments to certain categories of members? Uh, no, unfortunately you cannot. The attachment is for everybody. What you would have to do is attach, put the attachment into your Gmail parameters, do your statement run for just those statuses, and then go in, take it out of your Gmail parameters, and do a statement run for the statuses that you don't want to get the attachment. So no, unfortunately you cannot. You would have to send the statements by status and attach it based on what status you're sending for. Are there any other questions for me? Okay, I will stay on the line and I'll, I'll monitor the chat and the Q&A for another couple of minutes. Um, just so that you know, this session, it was recorded and it will be posted on jonassupport.com under resources and training. Um, as well as the PDF slides of this presentation. So both of those things will be on jodasupport.com under resources and training. And otherwise, thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you guys have a great day.